So I did a video on black fathers and their relationships with their daughters. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, girl, it's a must watch. It will be pinned to the comment section as well as in the description box. And it's only right for me to do a video on black mothers. Now, shout out to everyone who requested and who patiently waited for this video. Girl, here you go. Get your popcorn. Get your, you know, get your little tissues because it's gonna get a little emotional okay i want to send out a warning to all of the viewers this video may be triggering for some who have traumatic experiences with their moms but it is important that you guys discuss and heal now in the black community mothers are to be loved respected and feared child okay i think surface level um, as a people, we respect mothers. We love mothers. We appreciate mothers. They are the queens of the universe, right? But that's very surface level. If we were to talk to people on an individual one-on-one uh, -on -one basis, you may hear a different narrative. Now, I will say it wasn't until I became an adult that I learned about toxic mothers. Um, I don't know if it was just like I have a great mom and I don't think that anyone is perfect. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect human being, but I do know that I have an amazing mother. Um, so for me, I had a very one sided viewpoint on motherhood and on black mothers. Right. And like I said, it wasn't until I became older and I was able to hear other people's experiences and do more research that I learned about toxic mothers. You guys know that I am Nigerian American, but all of my black American friends had great mothers as well. Like, you know, I was surrounded by girls who had um, strong, black, important, beautiful, educated mothers. So we do have to shout out all the women who are mothers, for future mothers, for women who are mothers in other ways. It might not be your biological child, but you are mothers in other ways. Honey, y'all know I'm mother of many things, okay? So shout out to me too. <laughs> But no, honestly, uh, this video idea came to mind while I was watching an episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta this season. You guys know Kenya Moore and Portia have both given birth to two beautiful baby girls. And what is supposed to be a joyous beginning to a new life-changing chapter, they are faced with the harsh realities, okay? I'm going to start with Kenya. Um, her story goes a little bit deeper for me. Um, Kenya is one of my favorite characters, and she went through a very high-risk birth okay choosing to have children later on in life she is 47 does often come with complications and as we know many black women regardless of age and socioeconomic status are at high risk during pregnancies black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes than white women according to the center for disease control and prevention okay lack of access and poor quality of care are the leading factors black pregnant women are often undervalued and are monitored and aren't monitored as carefully as white women. Tennis champion Serena Williams and Beyonce shared similar stories. If you guys want, we can do a separate video on that because that's that's a whole like mind fuck in itself. But we can do a separate video on that. Go back to this topic. Kenya Moore was very open and candid about the alarming details of her pregnancy, but finally, by the grace of God, her bundle of joy, Brooklyn Daily, made her entrance into this world and has been shining ever since, okay? That little baby Brooklyn looked just like her dad. Like, it just be crazy to me, like, women, like, I know what y'all go through, and then you spit the baby out, and sis look just like daddy, like, you ain't do nothing but just take all the pain. That ain't right that ain't right now if you guys didn't know which i'm sure you have if you've been watching the show for some time um kenya has had an estranged relationship with her mother and confessed to suffering a great deal of pain because of this um kenya's mother had her at the young age of 16 and kenya was sent to live with her paternal grandmother kenya later revealed that her mother never named her and since birth her mother made the decision to pretend she never had me she would see her mother at different family events and her mother would not speak to her she would not even acknowledge her kenya basically felt invisible in her mother's presence and if that's not heartbreaking enough um we do see episodes where kenya tries to reach out to her mother to speak to her mother um and she never has any luck with that in an interview done six years ago uh kenya confesses that the distant relationship with her mother ultimately affected her romantic relationships as well um kenya acknowledges her pattern of fail of falling for men who are emotionally unavailable and physically unavailable is that she unconsciously seeks rejection or failure with these men which mimics the relationship with her mother 
And now fast forwarding six years, we see exactly that. I mean, this episode for me was really cringeworthy to see her interact with her husband, who was literally emotionally unavailable to her, as well as physically unavailable to her because he does own um, some restaurants in Brooklyn and they have a home in Atlanta. So that in itself, I don't know what was the plan for that. Um, but something like that has to be worked out before the baby gets there. But let me let, let me let me take a step back. Mark is an alpha male. He is definitely traditional in a lot of ways. With Mark, Brooklyn is always a priority. Do I feel like I'm a priority? No. You know, I miss being a girlfriend. Now that Brooklyn is here, I'm very much a mother and I'm a good wife, but I don't know if the girlfriend is there. And I know that's important to a relationship. You're number one. I'm supposed to be number one. What? Who's number one, me or Brooklyn? Hmm? Now I can't play the full clip because of copywriting, but this whole scene was cringeworthy, child. Let me clutch my pearls and gather myself in the voice of the juice, honey, okay? Mark was basically ignoring Kenya the entire time. Kenya would talk to him and he would talk to the baby. Kenya would ask him a question and he would talk to the baby. Kenya would <laughs> try to get his attention and he was talking to the baby, okay? It was almost like, again, as if she was invisible and again, mirroring a relationship that she has with her mother. Some of her concerns expressed in this episode was that Mark wants baby Brooklyn to sleep in the bed with them therefore they are not allowed to be intimate um, you know he's so far away in New York so he's in New York most of the time and she's with the baby in Atlanta by herself and that for his birthday he wanted to go on a trip for his birthday just the two of them and he's like no I gotta bring my baby so Kenya really wants a long time with her man to get back to where they used to be but he ain't here for it okay it's almost as if he just used her for the baby child you know how they say oh women just use men for the baby yeah sometimes men use women for a baby too okay and I truly hope that's not the case, but you would think that with all that Kenya went through to get Brooklyn here, you know, Mark would have some sort of um, compassion, some sort of love and admiration to want to help his wife heal, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally. Like, I don't understand, like, this woman almost lost her life to bring this little girl into this world, and it's, you're treating her as if, like, she can't do anything right. Um, you know, he wanted eggs for breakfast, but there was no eggs eggs in the house and he's like oh this is like a college a college dorm refrigerator like he was just so nasty in that scene like so passive aggressively nasty like, having a partner like mark um can definitely trigger some ptsd for kenya honey and cause her to resent her child resentment is also something that we don't talk about when it pertains to black mothers as well as postpartum depression now resentment does fall under the umbrella of postpartum depression it's just one of the symptoms you know wishing that you didn't have your baby or thinking how life would be like if your baby wasn't here and you know I think this is something that is normal to an extent like postpartum depression is normal let women know that there are ways to get through it and they are not alone and they can get help and having your man there to support you through this depression and through these feelings is so vital. And I know a lot of times women like to say, oh, I don't need a man and I don't need a man. I'm going to be a single mom. It is not easy being a single mother. It's not easy dealing with um, postpartum depression on your own. But it's it's definitely not easy having the man right there and he still cannot support you. Now, Kenya asking who does Mark love more was a result of her not getting any love from her husband, but watching her husband shower her daughter with all of this love, right? So it's like, okay, so you are capable of being loving, just not to me, not anymore, and I wanna know why. Now, from what we saw, Mark did not answer her. But had Mark said, you know, of course, I love my daughter more. Again, that can build up some resentment, some bitterness, and even uh, competition between Kenya and her daughter. I think that Kenya is personally dedicated to breaking the generational curse. And she wants a beautiful and close relationship with her daughter that she never had. However, the issues between her and Mark can create some subtle tensions okay 
you know, they did come out and say that they were going to get a divorce, but no papers have even been started to be filed, child. So that might have just been for a storyline or for TV. But how he treats his wife and how he treats his daughter, I don't think that's for a storyline. I think that's real. And he needs to be careful with how he treats his wife. Now, this wasn't in my notes, but just doing the segment on Kenya, I thought about uh, Black China and her relationship with her mother, Tokyo Tony. I don't know all the details with their relationship, but from what I can tell um, and from what, from what I know, they were both stripping at the same time time which that in itself is like Arr! like what house way um but yeah you know when tokyo tokyo tony had uh china young as well and she was a stripper at the time trying to support her daughter her daughter got older i think around 15 16 and black china started stripping as well you guys know that that industry is very competitive those clubs are very competitive tokyo tony definitely saw black china as competition she was a younger version of herself you know they do look just alike to me they they resemble each other so much um you know china has done some bleaching in the past but they do look alike to me so i'm sure she looked at her as you know the lighter younger more prettier version of herself and you know there's a lot more there to unpack i never really dove deep into their story child because i just feel too deeply but these two they need intense intense therapy but I do want to say that there are levels to toxic mothers. Not all toxic mothers are out here calling their daughters bitches and calling the cops on their daughters and doing drugs. You know, there are levels to it. I will also link a video that I watched that I think was really good. Um, and they talked about the different signs of, you know, a toxic mother and daughter relationship. Some that I didn't even think of. So I'll link that down below as well. Um... But I do want to hear you guys' opinions down below. Did you see this episode with Kenya, her husband, and the baby? How do you feel about Kenya asking her husband who does he love more, her or the baby? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.